Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on uh, in numerically evaluating a special functions. And I'm going to look at the sp spherical Bessel functions. So, so far we have looked at the ordinary Bessel functions and the modified Bessel functions. Now we're going to look at the spherical Bessel functions. And as I mentioned before, Bessel functions were the solutions of the wave equation in the cylindrical coordinates and obviously spherical Bessel functions are the solutions of the wave equations in the spherical coordinate system and uh, ordinary Bessel functions are denoted by capital J and capital Y spherical Bessel functions are denoted by small j and small y right so j and y n unlike the ordinary Bessel functions spherical Bessel functions only uh, are only defined for integer parameters not any uh, so they are not defined for non-integer parameters all right so what is the differential equation again it's a wave equation x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime plus s x squared minus n times n plus y n plus 1 times y equals 0. Now if you compare this with the Bessel differential equation you see that we have a factor of 2 here which we didn't have in the Bessel and we also have n times n plus 1 in the Bessel function we have n times n or n squared right in the Bessel equation and uh, uh, and obviously this is very similar to Bessel equation so there has to be some relation between the spherical Bessel functions and uh, and the Bessel functions and there is indeed a, a relation so the a spherical Bessel function of the first kind j n of x is a square root of pi over 2 or 0.5 times pi over x times the Bessel function of the first kind j n plus 0.5 so these integer indices for the j spherical ones are half integer indices for the ordinary Bessel function j obviously there is a factor of uh, a square root of pi over 2 over x here all right so basically the idea here is that if you uh, do uh, there is a method of solving differential equations called the method of reduction right so you substitute for the solution jn with square root of uh, pi over 2 over x sum times some unknown function and then when you put this here and you end up with a with a bessel differential equation which here the parameter is a n plus 0.5 squared and that's why you have the Bessel function of the half integer indices here all right now the uh, the spherical Bessel function of the second kind is defined as minus 1 to the n plus 1 a square root of 0.5 pi over x j minus n minus 0.5 all right and remember j, we said that when we were solving the Bessel functions we said that uh, the parameter of the Bessel function if it's new and if nu is not an integer then j minus nu and j nu are independent are linearly independent but if nu is an integer j minus n and j n are not linearly independent but here we always have non-integer indices right it's half integer so it's definitely not integer for any n so this is in fact the correct j minus nu function all right and uh, for spherical Bessel functions as I mentioned n is only defined as a uh, integer so spherical Bessel functions are not defined for non-integer ones and n is greater than or equal to zero we don't typically define them for non-positive integers or for example for negative integers we don't define them we only define them for zero and positive integers all right and obviously if we have the Bessel function of the first kind and second kind we can have the Hankel functions of the first kind and second kind so the Hankel function of the first kind the spherical Hankel function is the spherical Bessel function plus j y n uh, and then Hankel 2 is j n the Bessel fun spherical Bessel function minus j spherical Bessel function of the second kind so these are called spherical Hankel functions and then uh, how do we implement them so we have already uh, implemented the Bessel functions j nu j minus nu in a very very efficient way in Java so we just take advantage of them all right no problem we just always have to evaluate them for half integer parameters 
So here's the plot. I have here as for a spherical Bessel function of the first kind, j, 0, order 0, or parameter 0, order 1, j1, j2. And you see just like the uh, uh, Bessel function of uh, the ordinary Bessel function, capital J at 0, the spherical Bessel function of index 0 also starts from 1. So basically what happens here when we want to evaluate these two functions, the spherical Bessel function of the first kind and the second kind, uh, for uh, basically uh, uh, small arguments, when x goes to 0, we have to use the small argument expansion for j nu or j minus nu. And let me go back and uh, uh, refresh your memory about the a small argument expansion for the Bessel functions of the first kind j nu is 1 over gamma nu plus 1 x over 2 to the power of nu all right now substitute nu with n plus 0.5 a half integer index and then you see that uh, uh, this becomes uh, 1 over gamma n plus uh, 0.5 and then uh, uh, gamma n plus 1.5 nu plus 1 over uh, basically x over 2 to the power of n plus 0.5 now if n is 0 we end up with x over 2 to the power of 0.5 which is basically a square root of x which cancels with this square root of x so j0 of x when x goes to 0 becomes a constant number and it's non-zero right and that non-zero value turns out to be 1 all right so when we're evaluating these spherical Bessel functions, even numerically, we have to uh, separately take into account what happens when x goes to 0 and substitute the Bessel functions with the small argument uh, expansion. All right. So let's head to Eclipse and try to have a look at the Java implementation. So in our uh, special functions, I have uh, this uh, spherical Bessel function. Obviously, we have a Bessel function object that we can use to evaluate j nu and then we have a gamma function and the reason that I have gamma function is because when x becomes very small I cannot use the Bessel function because there's a square root of x in the denominator so I have to replace uh, the definition of the spherical Bessel function with the, a small argument expansion of the Bessel function so j uh, n plus 0.5 becomes x over 2 to the power of n plus 0.5 which I remove the plus 0.5 with the square root of x in the denominator and then we have uh, gamma of n plus 1.5 in the denominator and this coefficient is just a square root of 0.5 times pi all right so uh, this is how we implement how this is how easily we can implement the j and spherical functions and remember our implementation of the Bessel function and gamma function was very efficient so this is also a very efficient way of implementing the spherical Bessel functions so j n if x is very small we use this uh, a small argument expansion and otherwise we just take the square root of 0.5 times pi divided by square root of x times the Bessel function j nu and evaluate it at half integer n plus 0.5 all right and then uh, uh, for y n the same thing minus 1 to the minus 1 to the n plus 1 so if n is uh, even this becomes minus 1. If n is odd, this becomes plus 1. So that's what I have here. So if it's even, it becomes minus 1. Otherwise, it becomes plus 1. This is a ternary operator. And then uh, I have the coef times the square root of x, special function j nu of minus n minus 0.5 and x. All right. And uh, Hankel is jn plus jyn, Hankel 2 jn minus jyn. And right now I have just implemented the spherical Bessel functions for real parameters, real x. Uh, but we can extend it to complex as well. So let's have a look at the tests. Uh, let's see if I have uh, a test class for spherical Bessel functions. Lambda modify a spherical Bessel function. So in test one, 
I just evaluate. Uh, so we, I create my spherical Bessel function class. My x real variable goes from 0 to 50, 1000 points. I have, I'm setting up a timer to look at how long it takes. And I evaluate j0, which is jn with the index 0 and t, and then j1, j2, j3. And then I just plot them, all right? So let's run this. Twenty-nine milliseconds, so it's pretty fast, and this is our uh, result. And as you can see, uh, we use the for very uh, small values. We use the uh, small argument expansion of the Bessel function. So all the spherical Bessel functions start from zero, except for J zero, which starts from one, and we get this oscillatory behavior. And again, this is expected because we're solving wave equations. And the solutions of wave equations are supposed to oscillate. All right. But I can also export this to Python and compare the accuracy of our implementation in Java with the implementation in SciPy. So I have to uh, open this exported file in a text editor, select all. And as you can see, it already puts them in a nice list format of Python. And then go to our Jupyter notebook. And uh, let me also increase the dimension of the figure. And then uh, we're going to plot x0, y0, which is the spherical Bessel function. So I'm setting the label to j0 of x. And let's not, just, let's not save it. And in the SciPy, we have, uh, let's see. Let's see if I have a spherical Bessel function, i n, j n, right? And then uh, we have 0 and x0, similar to ordinary Bessel function. Here we just call the spherical j n. And as you can see, we get a perfect, uh, we get a perfect match, right? For j0, and then y1 is j1. Again, as you can see, we get a perfect match. And then y2 is jn2, we get a perfect match, and y3 is uh, j3, and we get a perfect match, all right? Now, of course, we can plot all of them, so maybe let's use the next cell. So here I am going to plot all of them, so y0, y1, y2, y3, and then uh, 1, 2, 3, j0, j1, j2, j3. And as you can see, we have a perfect match to Python, all right? And I can also limit the x uh, range. So x limit from, let's say, 10 to 20. And uh, maybe also limit the y limit from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And as you can see, or maybe also minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2. And again, the match is very good. And our implementation was also pretty fast. All right. Now I can go back to Eclipse and uh, try to implement this for complex numbers. So, uh, complex implementation. Note that the Hankel uh, functions uh, always return complex because their definition is based on complex. All right. So here we're going to pass in a complex and of course we're going to return a complex as well. And all of these functions come from then come from my complex math class. All right. And let's import it. So absolute value of x less than this, then uh, the a small argument expansion of the Bessel function is still the same because uh, it works both for real and uh, complex numbers. So this should work and we can uh, go and test it. Uh, let's copy this. So I'm going to call this test three and we want to invoke test three. 
all right so we're plotting 0 to 50 and then uh, what I'm going to do for example I'm just going to uh, create a complex array complex j0 new so let's import this from my mathlib new complex x dot length and then for int i equals zero and len is x dot length i less than len i plus plus i want uh, j zero of i is func dot uh, j n of complex so n is zero and here i have uh, x plus uh, let's say 2j all right and i need to also import j as a static member from the complex class all right so here we have the static import and obviously this is not x is xi so xi plus 2j it automatically converts it to a complex and then uh, let's so what we're going to do we're going to just pass here all right so we can have the label j0 legend on all right so it should automatically plot both the real part and the imaginary part 35 millisecond is pretty fast and we have our j0 the blue is the real part now you can see that the real part can go up, go higher than one and then we have the imagining part let's export to python and uh, open it in the text editor copy everything go back to our jupyter notebook paste this here and what we want to do we want to plot y0 which is the real part all right of uh, x0 plus 2j and then uh, x0 is uh, a list and operators are not overloaded for list so I convert it to a numpy array and then this returns the real part so np dot real part this returns the function returns the complex number and we want to plot the real part and as you can see we get a perfect fit all right so let's remove this there uh, so this is the real part and y1 and np dot imaginary is the imaginary part and we get a perfect match so i hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture this was a very easy uh, introduction to the spherical bessel functions and there's not much more to a spherical bessel functions than this in terms of numerical evaluation because we already have a very efficient way of calculating the bessel functions and we already know the relation uh, a small argument expansion when x goes to zero close to zero which relates to the gamma function so we should be able to implement uh, the efficient numerical calculation for Bessel functions all right thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one